you. Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. It's a privilege to testify before you today on a range of issues of concern to my district. So the 5th District of Pennsylvania is not only a major transportation corridor for the Northeast United States, having the I-95 corridor, Amtrak, et cetera, but it's also home to large transportation and infrastructure entities such as the Philadelphia International Airport, the Philadelphia Port, Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, the Philadelphia Shipyard, and the Philadelphia Navy Yard. Thousands of my constituents work in these industries and rely on continued investment in them in order to provide for their families and support their businesses. Two weeks ago, I hosted a bipartisan transportation infrastructure forum with members from our regional delegation at the Philadelphia Navy Yard. We were able to bring together many interested parties to discuss the needs of our region that would benefit from a substantial federal infrastructure package. Participants included the CEO Council for Growth, a consortium of major industry leaders in Philadelphia, as well as labor leaders, policymakers, and other local groups. The hearing touched on many aspects of infrastructure improvements, from improving roads and bridges and rail service to providing funding for public school infrastructure and ensuring that we have a trained workforce ready to get to work as soon as possible. We saw strong bipartisan interest in getting infrastructure done and heard repeated expressions of hope that all members of Congress and the administration would work together to get an infrastructure bill across the finish line, a hope that I share. As you consider passing an infrastructure bill, um, I'd ask you to consider Pennsylvania's experience um, with infrastructure in 2013. Our state legislature was able to work in a bipartisan manner to address our most pressing infrastructure needs because that's what was best for all of our communities. Act 89 resulted in the advancement of 2,600 transportation projects across the state, including rebuilding a uh, railroad bridge that dated back to the Grover Cleveland's administration uh, just a few blocks from my house. These projects didn't just improve our roads, they provided jobs to thousands of Pennsylvanians and reduced costs for businesses. We know that for every dollar spent on infrastructure, we see somewhere in the neighborhood of $3 in return. Infrastructure is truly one of the smartest investments we can make as a nation and will benefit every single community. Among the many concerns I hear from my district are the need to properly fund the Highway Trust Fund and Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund, to reauthorize the FAST Act, and to adjust the cap on the passenger facility charge, as well as to ensure that any repairs or construction are completed by a well-trained local workforce and in an environmentally sustainable manner. I'm heartened by the preliminary discussions between the administration and congressional leadership to pursue a substantial bipartisan infrastructure package. But the longer we wait, the more our communities will continue to erode. The American Society of Civil Engineers rated Pennsylvania's infrastructure at a C minus, only slightly better than the nation's overall grade of D plus, but not enough to assure our constituents that we're doing all we can to help fix these problems. Also, it's not enough to rebuild our infrastructure in the way that we have in the past. We've learned a lot about environmentally sustainable building practices, and it's critical that we use these technologies and that they're prioritized in an infrastructure package. I'm hopeful that any infrastructure bill that comes out of this house has significant direct federal investment in our communities and provides the ability to leverage private dollars to make necessary improvements. In the case of airports, I support adjusting the passenger facility charge so that our airports can raise revenue to make necessary improvements and increase competition. Adjusting the cap on the PFC would allow airports to grow and to invest billions in our airports without laying the burden on taxpayers. Grant programs such as Infra and Build also have been useful tools for funding infrastructure initiatives in my district, and I would encourage the committee to continue to fund programs like these. Having visited a number of schools during our recent district week, I want to urge that the most important investment that we can make is in our people and particularly in our youth. I believe school infrastructure investments should be included in any in infrastructure package, including projects such as those in Representative Bobby Scott's Rebuild America Schools Act that would help make long-term improvements to our public schools, alleviating overcrowding, decay, and inadequate learning conditions so that we can prepare students for 21st century jobs. Again, thank you all very much for your time today. I wish you the best of luck as you take on this necessary and ambitious challenge. Uh, I thank the gentlelady. Uh